Hey guys, Keith here. I want to take you through today an update to a feature that I was pretty happy with when I built it, but it's got a bit of a reputation as being slow, difficult to use, not very reliable. And so I've been working on some improvements to it and I'm hoping today I can demonstrate that I'm going to get some pretty good results with it. So what we have here is a prop. I've, I've punched a couple of pixels in here, not very many of them. This is a live feed. And what I want to do is I want to use the video mapping to generate a custom model. Now, it's not a perfect background, although the room is dark, which will help. Uh, it's not super dark with all these extra pixels that are just randomly on and a whole bunch of controllers in the background with lights, etc. And I'm deliberately doing that to show you that this is this is actually not as sensitive as maybe the previous one was where everything had to be ideal. To use the tool, you go to the generate custom model just as you did before. You do need to specify the number of nodes and it's important you get that number right both here and in the processing because the patterns are quite dependent upon it. And then you need to set an intensity. You don't want to set it too low or too high. If you set it too low, then the processing step is not going to detect the video correctly. During the video, you'll see that it will start with two bright flashes. And that's how the process keys off the, the timing of the video. And if those aren't bright enough, and if you set the intensity really, really low, unless the room's really dark, that's just not going to be bright enough for it to detect the start frames. So you need to set that up a little bit to make sure that it's bright enough to, to get the data that it needs. You then want to click on the run capture pattern and click on the record and click OK. Now this is a, a webcam sitting on a tripod. So that's a, that looks reasonably good. Hopefully that's bright enough that we're going to be able to detect that. I do need to stop the video. And then I go to the process, select nodes. I need to type that number 20 in again because that's the number of nodes on it. And I need to get to the dots here. I need to go and find the video. And you can see I've done a few videos, but we're going to choose this one here, which is the one we just recorded. Uh, the video is steady. That's pretty important because otherwise it, it struggles to deal with all that noisy background. But because the video is steady, it should be able to subtract the background away. And you can turn on preview the video, which will show you the video as it tries to do the start frame detection, but it slows it down. So generally I turn that off. We click next and it watches the video and you can see it's going through the progress bar. Now this process here is the only time it's going to watch the video. Everything else after this is now done with frames that it captures in memory, which makes the rest of the process so much better than it used to be. It used to be a really, really slow process. Uh, and every time you twiddle with the settings, you'd have to go back and basically watch the whole video again. Very painful because there's only a handful of frames here, uh, you don't need to do that. Except I didn't catch the start frame, so let's go back. Let's pump that brightness up a little bit more. Run the capture pattern again. Click OK. This will be a little bit brighter this time. Hopefully that's bright enough. And stop the video. Click OK. Go back to process. I'll try it again. And we'll watch the video again. Some of those bright pixels down here and up here could have thrown it out a little. Okay, there's a good sign. So now it showed you the, all the white pixels. It's going through the various frames where the pixels are different colors, and then it settles on that all bright frame where all the pixels are turned on. So now we click Next, 
and it does its analysis. And you can see that it, while it spotted some of them, it, it hasn't done a perfect job. So I'm going to play a little with the sensitivity to start with. And as you can see, when I drop the sensitivity, it's still having problems with the first pixel, but pretty much every single other one it has nailed. So maybe drop the sensitivity a little bit lower. Oh, there you go, it nailed them all. And that's it. And you can see how quickly that adjustment allowed it to, to rerun the analysis and identify the 20 pixels. It would not be materially faster as the numbers go up. I mean, it's linearly fast. So if I had a thousand pixels, it would have taken obviously a fair bit more time to do that analysis, but it's not a huge amount of time, uh, unlike the previous one where it would take a large amount of time. Now you can go into advanced mode. If you go into advanced mode, you do get access to a lot more controls where you can fiddle with the image processing to try and improve its detection. And when it runs, it, it looks a little bit different because you actually get to see the detection algorithms as they run in some of the intermittent images. And essentially what it's doing is it knows the pattern that each pixel should have displayed, which sequence of red, green, and blue. And what it does is it just progressively looks at each frame and says, well, where are all the red pixels? Okay, so it must be one of those and rejects everything that wasn't red. And then it looks at the next pixel, maybe that's red again. And so again, it takes away all the pixels that aren't red. And then maybe the next one is green. So it looks at all the areas that are green in the third frame and subtracts everything away. And so it basically zeroes in on each of the pixels. And when I click the advanced mode and, and I run it again, which I'll do in just a second, you'll get to see how it's zeroing in. And in a perfect world, it leaves enough of the, the, the colored pixels left and you'll actually see that they don't actually show up as dots, they actually show up as circles. And the reason for that is the pixels are quite bright in the center and this cheap webcam here does a really poor job of uh, looking at those pixels and sees the center pixel as white rather than seeing it as red, green, or blue. And so it doesn't actually detect the centers, but it does select to detect the halo. And the way the algorithm works is it looks at that halo and says, okay, so that looks like my pixel. And then it takes the average position of that halo, which is often the center of the pixel, but sometimes it's not. It can be down the bottom right or up the top left, etc. And that just means that when it detects on pixel one, it probably ends up with a semicircle down here and therefore it picks this location. Whereas when it gets to pixel two, or four here, it's obviously probably got a circle and therefore nailed the center pretty well. So I'm just gonna click briefly on the model scale here because that'll trigger it to reprocess and you'll see that process running. So there it is, it did pixel one, that was pixel three, there's pixel four, there's pixel five, six. Now you don't, it doesn't look the same for everything. There's actually some optimizations where uh, each of the pixels are often similar to pixels that have been before. And so the algorithm is smart enough to not redo the processing that's already been done. And so it can actually be quite efficient in the processing. But that's it, uh, a pretty good outcome. Now I do have some videos that I was working on earlier. Uh, actually, before I do that, let me quickly go. You click next here and it shows you the model that has been generated which is roughly the zigzag outline uh, there. And you can then save that as a custom X model file and then import it into your layout and it's all good. But let me go back a few steps here and let me pick some videos where I can show you uh, the degree to which, oops, one too far. But let me go and choose some, some earlier videos. So this is the one that I was working on during most of the development. Uh, same, absolute same prop. It's a little bit brighter in this video. It's a little while to process. The video could be a little bit longer here. I may not have stopped it as early or started it as early, so it just takes a little bit longer. It'll up, read up to 15 seconds of video. So if your video is a little bit longer, it will scan well past when the video actually, or the lights stop flashing, it will get to the end of the video. 
is that analysis then we hit next uh, we're still in advanced mode so we're going to see the, the all the processing work again but it's still got the default setting so it's it's still using the the, the settings that it would have used by default Alright, and again, it does a pretty good job if I take it out of advanced. You can see it runs a lot faster when it's it's in its non-advanced mode because it doesn't have to do all that image display, which seems to slow it down quite significantly. And finally, let me sh show you one other video. And I was, I was stunned that this worked as well as it did. This was actually the very first video I took. And you can see, believe it or not, there is a string of pixels that is stretched across those controllers. Now the controllers aren't on, so you don't have all the noise of the lights from the controller, but there are actually pixels there. You can see there's one here, one here, there's one down here, there's one there, there, there. Um, there's even one over behind the network cable hidden, and we'll see that in a second when it does start frame detection. So let, let's run this one through start frame detection because once they're all lit up you'll be able to see where the pixels are and just how difficult this particular image should be to identify the pixel locations so it found the start frame but you can see here's a pixel here that's pretty much hidden behind an ethernet cable this is path hidden this one here, you can't see the pixel. It's laying up against the surface, so there's mostly reflections. It's pretty similar up here. I think the pixel's in behind the network cable, and what you're seeing is the reflections behind it. it it's really quite a poor image. But let's run it. And there it is. And it has done an amazing job. It nailed this one. It's a little bit off to the left of this one, a little bit below this one. Lower left, but still on it. That one's not too bad, not too bad. This one's not too bad. Uh, this one's wrong. There's clearly, this is not where the pixel is. I think the pixel's up here, so it got this one wrong. This one is a bit high, but you know, in the scheme of things, I don't think I would have expected this to have found it uh, in the previous model, definitely, or the previous generation, and it would have taken a lot longer to do so. So, this will be in 2022.12. Try it out if you have videos that you try and particularly if you get past the start frame detection, but it does a pretty poor job of uh, detection, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to see the videos that struggled and maybe I can uh, fine tune it even further or improve the analysis even further so it does a good job. But hey, thanks guys. Mm -hmm.